Fujifilm has brought some serious performance to the table with the all new X-H2S. This camera packs some serious great specs for photo, but some seriously impressive specs when it comes to video. The new camera features a brand new sensor. The X-H2S is the first camera to feature the X-Trans 5 stacked backside illuminated sensor. Fujifilm mentions that by placing the sensor circuitry on a separate layer from the pixels, the image quality of the low light capabilities have actually been improved. Part of this is in thanks to the 64-bit X processor 5, which is new as well. The camera has up to 14 stops of dynamic range, and the processor also helped improve the AF system, but we'll get to that here in a little bit. The resolution of the electronic finder has been improved to 5.76 million dots. That's quite a lot more than the X-T4, which only had 3.69 million dots. The finder can also refresh at 120 frames per second, which should be great for capturing action. Now let's talk about the seriously impressive video specs of this camera. The camera can now shoot 6.2K at 30 frames per second, 4K at 120, and HD at 240 frames per second. That's seriously impressive and is in line with say the Sony A7S III. What's even more impressive is that it will shoot those in Apple ProRes internally at 10-bit 422 with the 14 stops of dynamic range. For myself personally, I'm also excited about the 6.2K capability. That gives you the ability to punch into the footage without any loss of quality on say a 4K timeline. And on a 1080p timeline, that has some serious digital zoom capability. The rolling shutter on this camera seems to be non-existent, which is really good to see as that can plague some cameras. Fujifilm notes that the camera can record up to 90 minutes of footage continuously. Granted, that's really all gonna depend on your cards. I'm shooting ProRes in HQ right now, and I've got five and a half minutes on a 128 gigabyte card. So speaking of cards, this camera takes a CF Express type B card and an SD card. That's not really surprising given that the performance and the video specs, I was originally concerned that the camera was only going to have a dual CF Express slots, which can be quite expensive. So I'm glad to see that there's still an option to use an SD card as well. The camera doesn't slouch in the stills department either. It can do 15 frames per second with a mechanical shutter and it, if you use the electronic shutter you can get up to 40 frames per second. And thanks to those super fast CF Express cards and the high capacity buffer, the camera will shoot unlimited JPEGs and RAWs while never filling the buffer. The camera also packs an improved in-body image stabilization that can now do up to seven stops of shake reduction. It packs even more video features if you want to do external recording. F-Log, F-Log 2, Apple ProRes RAW, and Blackmagic RAW footage can be recorded to an external device through a camera standard full-size HDMI port. For me, this is probably one of the more important updates. The camera has a new deep learning AI adaptive autofocus algorithm that is supposed to be three times faster than the X-T4. The camera can also work in low light levels down to negative seven EV. The camera expands upon the previous X series of cameras with face detection autofocus, and it can now recognize and track cars, planes, trains, motorcycles, bikes, birds, horses, dogs, cats, and more. They also improved the face and eye detection to pick up hairlines, glasses, and even face coverings. There's going to be a new vertical grip for the camera, which I do have here. So the new vertical grip adds a nice balance to the camera if you're using longer lenses. What's interesting here is now on the vertical grip as well, we actually have a USB-C connector on the grip. So that's kind of interesting to see. I'm wondering if that's going to be help providing some power to switch between. Just like the X-T4, it does take the W235 battery. There's going to be an additional external fan that you can attach to the camera. As you can see here behind the screen, there's a couple mounting points as well as a connector. There are some substantial differences to the externals of the camera as well. We've completely lost the ISO and the shutter speed dials on the top of the camera. Now we only have a mode dial on the left side of the camera with seven custom modes. And on the front side of the camera, there's no longer an autofocus switch. There's now a button where you can toggle between single, continuous, and manual focus. Gone are the little silver eyelets, and now we have some nice attachment points. On the left side of the camera, we have a full-size HDMI port, separate mic, and headphone ports. 
and a USB-C port, which can also charge up the camera. It's really nice to see this addition of the full-size HDMI port. That's gonna make a lot of people happy, including myself. And on the right side, we have the CF Express Type-B and the SD card slot as well as a spot for remote. In the hands, the camera actually feels really good. I really do like the grip on this camera, even without the uh, external grip here. The grip on this camera is actually really nice. I'm really happy that this is so deep right here. The fact that your fingers can get in there and stay and kind of clinch on, it's really nice. Um, the back screen is really nice. It works pretty well in the bright daylight. The EVF is good as well. There's a bunch of different options for prioritizing um, high frame rate, for low light shooting, uh, resolution, and a bunch of a few different other options in there as well. The tracking for the autofocus is better. I don't think it's quite there just yet. I think it still needs a little bit of work. This isn't final firmware. This is a sample camera. So hopefully that they can fix that up. The autofocus tracking is better than what it was. I still think it can do a little better in terms of video. So for video, I did find that it was pulsing a lot as it lost me and tried to gain me back. Well, this is the X-H2S. Let me know what you think about it down in the comments below. And if you're interested in picking one up, you can head over to camerawest.com or hit the link down in the description below.